What's up and welcome to part three of manual swapping my E36 M3. I'm actually filming this right at the end. I just got it wrapped up, um, but forgot to film an intro. But in this one, I got the motor built, bolted up to the transmission and dropped into the car. Got my shifter, put it into the car, drive shaft up, exhaust hung. I got the uh, pedal assembly modified and put into the car, as, long, as well as my clutch hydraulics and slave cylinder all made it up, as well as um, my reverse light wiring and bypassing my clutch switch. So if you need to know any of those things to manual swap your E36, follow along. <laughs> So if you remember in the last one, I broke uh, one of the header studs in the block or in the head. Um, so here we go. I got a whole new header install kit from Bimmer World, um, which is just all new studs, new nuts, and new nuts for the bottom of the header, as well as new exhaust gaskets. So here you can see is the old broken one. And here we'll do the thing. And now it's all good. We got new studs new nuts, new exhaust manifold gaskets, and all anti-seized so we don't have that problem next time this needs to come off. All right, check it out. A little update on the pedal assembly. I didn't fully include this in the last video because I thought I was missing some pieces. I was missing some pieces um, for the clutch pedal. A couple of the pins that hold this um, clutch spring, and there's a couple, I already put them back in here. There's this pin that goes on either side of this spring assembly and that bolts to the pedal or the one of the pins goes in here and the other one is supposed to sit right there at the tip of my finger. Well it turns out this um, pedal support assembly, the support bracket, is actually different. I thought it was the same um, from the auto to the manual but this one it looks like it's the exact same casting but that little spot where that pin is supposed to sit which is right right here is not wide enough this so this piece is one end of the spring and it's supposed to slot in um I don't know if you'll able to see it it's supposed to slide in that little groove there and the the pin has, is a, has like a shouldered pin and it's supposed to sit right there and that groove's not wide enough so i did some googling um reached out to a couple of local people and a lot of people apparently don't even run these uh, clutch springs and people on the forums are saying that it might give or it gives a better clutch feel with just the using the hydraulics to you know push the pedal back so that's what we're going to do we're going to run without the spring for now and uh see how it is um but that's our full assembly we got our uh brake uh, like modified brake pedal here and then the uh clutch master cylinder all hooked up um, there's another big pin and a clip that goes here um, if you need all the parts, go on Real OEM and order them. That's what I did. Got everything I needed. So I've got a couple things that when I pulled the motor out, I realized I wanted to refresh before I put it back in. One of those is this um, steering coupler. So I got a brand new one. Um, as you can see, it's it's pretty bent and stretched and there's like dry, dry rubber crack marks. So we're gonna replace that and then I got a handful of radiator hoses, coolant hoses throughout, and a couple other seals. But this is a, a big one that's gonna help a lot. So I was about to tell you that little steering coupler wasn't that bad. Um, I've done one on an E46 before and it was cake. I did it underneath the car. It only took like 20 minutes. This one took me 20 or 30 minutes to do with the motor out and nothing in my way. Um, it just kind of sucked. It's, it should be easy. There's just a 13 millimeter bolt and nut on either side um, and then you slide it off except this column isn't like telescoping or like adjustable whatever I think the E46 I was able just to pull it out of the spline this one I unbolted the steering rack so I could pull the bottom half apart and then I pulled it off slowly thankfully um, but noticed that it's not keyed there's splines on the both sides of the, like the steering rack and the shaft, the steering column. And there's splines, where's the junk one? 
there's splines on the inside of this. And you can see I had to use my screwdriver to kind of open it up to get it off. It's a little crusty, um, but it's not keyed. The E46 coupler was keyed, so you could only go on and off one way on both sides. This one's not keyed, so I had to be extra careful to have it perfectly, like slide it off very carefully and then slide the new one right back on um, so I didn't have to redo an alignment or whatever because I don't have time for that and that's sucky to have to do an alignment after that. It shouldn't be that bad. Anyway, they got smart with an E46 and they made it keyed and it's way freaking easier. So I'm just trying to hammer through this and not filming too much, but I got new trans mount on with some poly bushings, new uh, guibo in the back. Um, and now we're going to do the one electronic thing you have to do when you do a manual swap. So we're gonna pull out the uh, transmission. I think this is our main DME here, you can see, and then there's another one. Uh, like an, I think it's the automatic trans DME is like right above it. So we're gonna pull that out and then there's a little connector we gotta pull out of there. So once I get it out and on the bench, I'll uh, show you what needs to be pulled out. So here's our automatic transmission computer. Finally got it out. It kind of sucked actually. Um, so after you get into the uh, DME box, um, first I pulled out the main DME and just kind of hung it down here. It's still plugged in. Um, to get that out, there's a Phillips here you need to loosen and a Phillips on this side. Um, there's just a hole there now because the Phillips is over here. But that loosens this little uh, pinch bracket and then the DME, the main DME slides right out. Um, then what I ended up doing is loosening this whole bracket here because I had this side open. And uh, you can see in there, there's two 10 millimeters on the side of that that clamp this DME bracket down. Anyway, because I couldn't figure out how to get the uh, the man, or automatic transmission DME computer out. Anyway, it's a big pain in the butt. Um, it's, it's sat in there like this. And um, after I unplug the connector, which is, oh geez, it's, it's this metal piece, you just fold this back and it kind of ejects the clip. Then you pull the front down and then it slides out. It's actually this way. Pull the front down and then it slides out. Big pain in the butt. But now, let's see if I can let you follow along. We're gonna grab a flat head. And unfold our little tabs here to get the cover off. Okay, so once you get all the tabs loose, pull this up, and this is the guy we're after. It's called like the EEPROM trip, EEPROM e chip. And I think we just yank this guy off here. Now we can uh, eject it. Here we go. I think we can just throw that in the trash. Don't really need to put that cover back on because there's nothing there. So we'll throw that in the trash too. Drop our metal top cover back on. Slide our little flange or little flanges through the slots. Take your screwdriver. And bend those suckers flat again. And it looks like it's about to yeah break off. So that's 20 year old metal for you. I'm just gonna try to bend it gently as possible. Because we broke one, and all the others are about to break. Whatever. This thing is not a moving part, so it should be good. We're gonna we're gonna button it back up. Take that now and we'll button it back up into here. And uh That'll be it for the ECU modification. And I think we'll still have a, because um, the tra automatic trans harness isn't plugged in and any, any of that crap. 
um, this pulling this out. It's going to have a transmission air on the on the dash, um, but for our case in a what's going to be mostly track car, it's not going to bother me. All right, the last thing we're going to do before we put the motor back in um, is install our pedal assembly and the clutch line. So we got our hard clutch line that goes to the from the master cylinder clutch master to the clutch line and the slave cylinder underneath, and then we have this big hydraulic line that goes from the top of here of the master cylinder up to the fluid reservoir. So first things first, we're gonna install this hard line. Um, we're gonna do all this before we put the motor in. Um, Cause I think it'll be a little bit easier. We'll have more space to work in there. Um, but I think you could probably do it either way. So down here by our pedals, you can see I've got a screwdriver through this hole. This is one hole I poked out for the hard line is the lower one. And then right above it up here is another smaller line, which is the, the soft line that goes up to the reservoir. So I poked this hole out and now I'm gonna take this hard line and feed it through. One side's threaded and the other side's like a push connector. The push connector goes to the master cylinder so that's gonna stay in the car. So we're gonna try to uh, see what we can do here about feeding this thing through. And see if it can come out in the right place on the other side. Uh, let's go see if we can see. I got it about halfway through. Let's see if we can see it in the engine bay. So it's supposed to come out right below the, um, right beside the brake reservoir right here. So that's where that hole is. Can't see anything. I can see it tucked way down there. So this is going to be a game. You probably can't see anything back there, but I see it poking through the firewall. So that's that's how you do it. And I'm just going to try to stick my hand down there and fish it the rest of the way through. So it hangs down behind the steering column and then it'll connect to our soft line that goes to the slave cylinder. Well, that was kind of a nightmare. Um, I got that line in. Um, I went in from the cabin side, like I said. Here's the end of it here. I'm not totally sure if it's routed the best. It looks like there's a slot on this like little clip here to hold another hard line, um, but I can't quite get it there. It was kind of a nightmare. Um, let me show you what it looked like inside. The, the push pin side that's gonna go to the master cylinder on inside the car here. It's still a little crooked. Um, it's loose, I can wiggle it around, but it was that much of a nightmare that I'm gonna call that good enough. And uh, we'll just get it, make sure we can get it plugged into the master cylinder and we should be fine to move on. So now we're gonna hook our soft hydraulic line that goes up to the reservoir to here, clamp it down, and then we'll feed it up through that top hole and pinch off our uh, reservoir here. We gotta, let's show you. There's a little nipple on the back of this right here. Probably super dark and you can't see, but it's closed off. And we gotta snip the end of it off to open it up and uh, then plug the other side of that hydraulic line in. I've got the uh, soft line fed through. That was pretty easy. I just stuffed it through and it came right out behind the, the brake booster. But getting that hard line connected to the slave cylinder, I mean the clutch master, um, was an absolute nightmare while fitting the um, whole assembly in there because the assembly, you couldn't get it on the studs of the brake booster um, before plugging in the hard line, but the hard line is already in its position and it can't wiggle because there's so much crap over there. So anyway, that, that sucked and I never want to do it again. So I forgot to show the uh, hooking up of the soft line to the, the fluid reservoir. So here we are. Um, I had like 20 inches extra long of hose, um, as you can see over here. So after I pulled it through and I have the pedals all lined up and attached to the, the brake master or the brake booster, um, I, I lined it up, cut about the right length, and then just took some side cuts and 
cut the very end of that. Um, there's a little nipple on the end of that, um, whatever, plug coming off there. So I just stuck a rag down here so I wouldn't get brake fluid everywhere. Um, slipped, snipped the nipple off and then made sure fluid did come out so I cut it high enough. And then I just slid that um, soft line onto there. And I didn't put a clamp on this side. It's really tight on there. I put a clamp on the master cylinder side um, by the pedals because I knew I was gonna be moving those pedals around a lot and I didn't want it to come loose. This, I just slid right on here and that's never gonna move again. And that's not a high pressure line. That's just like gravity fed um, brake fluid down to the master cylinder where it gets pressurized. So it should be no problem not having a clamp there. I just jammed it up nice and tight. So check it out. Before I put the motor in, I'm gonna put my dual shear selector rod, um, whatever, on the back of the transmission. Um, I, instead of going with the OEM carrier, um, didn't wanna use that. I originally bought an RTD shifter, which I was super excited about using. It said it would ship in like two weeks. Well, over a month later, it was still not shipped, so I called and canceled the order, bought an AKG Motorsports shifter and selector rod. And so here's our selector rod. It's a billet, super nice piece. The shifter base is all billet and super, super nice. So I'm gonna slap this on the back of the trans because I think it'll be easier um, to put on now. And I'll just let it dangle, hang there um, while I snake the, the motor in. And then uh, we'll be able to hook the shifter up once it's all, all put in the car. All right, so I haven't been filming too much because I've just been hammering away on getting this all put back together. I figured out the absolute mess of under the intake manifold. Um, got the front end mostly back on. I just don't, haven't put this together yet um, because when I was pulling um, the front end off, this hood catch on um, the, the part that holds the cable right here. It's a little plastic thing. It's got like a throttle cable, you know, like pin on the end of it. Well, the plastic's old, brittle, and cracked. So I ordered a new one of those, so I haven't put that back together yet because I'm waiting for that to come in. And then I started to work on um, installing my new sweet carbon dining intake. Carly's got one of those on her um, M Coupe, and it sounds awesome, so I just bit the bullet and bought one right away. Um, but I'm gonna do a separate um, how-to install video on that. Um, otherwise, we've got the drive shaft in underneath. Um, I just picked up some, where'd it go? Some gear oil for the trans, some distilled water, and I got coolant on the shelf. Um, we're gonna fill it up with oil and hang the exhaust, and then we're basically done. Um, oh, and I got the shifter in on the inside. I wanted to give a little pro tip here. So I think I showed it, but I've got my um, AKG shifter in i don't have the knob screwed on yet but it's pretty cool it feels good um it's like a bolt action rifle which is pretty rowdy i'm excited to actually test it out but akg suggests that you install it with um the you know you you cut up the factory um bushing not bushing like rubber boot that goes between the shifter and around the shifter and down below that seals off the cabin. Well, I obviously don't have the manual transmission one to trim up. So I use the automatic transmission one and I would argue it is much better for the purpose of this shifter. So as you can see, it was like the size of this whole piece here. Um, and you can see the rubber around here. It's a big square versus the manual one is just a circle and barely reaches around the, the circle that goes to the tunnel. Um, however, this big square one um, worked perfectly and I was able just to cut a small little hole underneath the shifter for the shifter to go through to connect to the selector rod. So it's, it's way better sealed off. There's no chance of any outside gases or air coming in, which is great. So it may not look like it, but we are done with the manual swap. 
kind of. The last two things we're gonna do to completely finish it off are wire in the reverse light switch and then we're gonna, in my case, I didn't put in a, um, a clutch switch since I don't have a need for it and I just didn't want one. Um, so we're gonna jumper that clutch switch so I can fire the car up in neutral at any time I want. So I'm gonna jump, cut to the cut to me in the car right now, and we're gonna test and figure out which um, which wires we need to jump for the reverse lights and well for the clutch switch. And then I've got a brand new, brand new, just a generic. Um, let me show you here. If I can get out of the box, I just bought a, a generic. Oh, it's good. I thought it didn't have the metal clip in it. Um, the standard BMW two prong thing that's like on every connector in the engine bay and throughout any recent BMW. But it's just got two little leads on it and we just need to wire that up to the new sensor that I stuck in the side of the transmission. Um, let me just go ahead and show you. It's on the um, passenger side of the car. And right there you can see um, my new switch. So I'm just gonna have this plugged in right here. And then I'm gonna wire these leads up through the shifter tunnel, um, which is right here. So if I decide to include that, you'll see that I miserably need a new soldering iron, but I extended this little clip. So it's like, I don't know, two or three feet long, way longer than I need to. So now I'm gonna take this underneath the car, plug it in and then feed it up through. Um, and I, I mentioned like the, the shifter turret, but there's actually a better spot um, where the automatic transmission um, shift cable went through. It's actually right up here, a little forward of the shifter. There's a hole right there. And I just so happened to have this grommet. I bought an extra grommet on accident for um, the clutch hydraulics, and this goes through the firewall. And it's about the perfect size with a little hole here that those wires um, will go through. So I'm gonna put that in just like that, and we'll feed those wires through, and then grab uh i think it's this connector here and we'll start we'll start cutting up the harness and uh plugging stuff in well, i actually just found some nice black like corrugated loom in my toolbox so i shoved the wires through that so then underneath the car it'll all be tucked up and protected check this out i went under the car and plugged in that harness i just made wired it up and it looks factory fresh that grommet worked perfectly um, i've got my extra long thing here. I might trim it down. I might not because it, it'll just be extra and fold under, under the center console here. So here's this cable. This is the one we're looking for. I marked it when I disassembled everything. I marked it auto shifter. It was what some cars making noise. Um, it was plugged into the right here into the automatic gear selector. And you can see there's eight terminals and the top left is missing. So I just confirmed and I'll show you number two right here on the left side and then the one right below it number three are the reverse light um, or is for the reverse light switch. So here it is. I got a little jumper wire and I'm going to stick this between these two terminals here. Plugged in there and then I'm going to go key on. What did I do with the key? Key on and my reverse lights will come on. So we just jump that switch. So as you can see, reverse lights are on. Now I'll leave the key on, pull that jumper out just to show you. Jumper's out and our reverse lights are off. So now what we're gonna do is take our, uh, polarity doesn't matter on this, it's just an on off switch to see if there's continuity. Um, so now what we're gonna do is take our two wires that we just connected down below and we'll snip those two terminals, number two and number three, out of this harness. And we will solder them to this. 
the switch we just brought up, and then our reverse lights will be working. For the clutch switch, um, we're gonna do something very similar. So, well, I told you that I'm not actually running a clutch switch on this car. So what I'm gonna do is just bypass the clutch switch. So on that same connector, um, here's what it looks like in the same orientation I just showed you. The reverse lights were two and three over here, and what I have plugged in now, we'll call it pins five and seven of this eight pin connector. Jumped those, and that's the clutch switch. So I'll show you with these this removed, the car will light up, and then nothing. No key, or it won't it won't start. I'll plug this back in. Pin five and seven, and I just started it up. And I probably have some other things to sort out with the car yet, but I'll show you. Fires up. So that's it. So that's the right pins for the clutch switch. So what we're gonna do to bypass it is similar to the uh, reverse lights. We're gonna, out of the back of here, we're gonna snip the back of this connector. We're gonna snip pin or wire five and seven which looks to be i can't really tell maybe a gray and a brown wire and then just as we jump them here you could leave this in there but it's not very permanent solution just fell out so we'll we'll snip those two wires pull them out and then we'll solder to them together crimp them together um so that we'll never need to um, engage the clutch when we start the car and we'll just bypass that clutch clutch switch so that's gonna be it for part three of the uh, manual swap of the M3. It's still on jack stands, um, and it doesn't quite look like it's totally done yet, but that's it. We fired the car up, we got the shifter in, everything goes into gear. Um, so that's it. That's, that's all the details you need to know to manual swap your M3. Um, keep following along, we're gonna get driving it soon. Um, it's still on jack stands because I'm about to do, I'm about to do brakes and a handful of other things to get it prepped for this weekend, um, Eric and I are going to the track. So stay tuned for driving content. I still gotta do some, some test drives and make sure everything's sorted and testing before the track day this weekend. And then stay tuned for more um, videos of us taking our cars out on the track this weekend. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So thanks for following along, keep it rad.